In this video, we're going to go over Punnett squares and we're going to go over specifically how to do monohybrid crosses. So remember, a monohybrid cross is when you're only looking at the inheritance of one specific trait. Before we go over the cross, we should review some vocabulary. So let's talk about heterozygous and homozygous. Remember that heterozygous genotypes have two letters that are not the same. So you could have a capital T and a small t, for example, because that would show that it has two different alleles that code for two different versions of a gene. You could also have capital B, small b. So anytime you have a heterozygous genotype, the two letters are not the same. They're typically a capital letter and a lowercase letter. Homozygous genotypes, on the other hand, have two alleles that are the same. So you could have capital T, capital T for a homozygous genotype, or capital B, capital B. You can also have lowercase genotypes. So you could have small t, small t, or you could have small f, small f. So any of those pairs of letters that are the same are homozygous genotypes. Next, let's do a cross between two people who have the trait for dimples or do not have the trait for dimples. In humans, dimples on the cheeks are dominant and no dimples is a recessive trait. So let's cross two people. Let's have one person who is heterozygous for dimples. So they have one dominant gene for dimples and one recessive gene for no dimples and cross them with somebody who has no dimples. So these are the two genotypes that we are gonna use. So you're gonna distribute the genotypes on the top and the side of your Punnett square. So we can put our person who has dimples on the top. So we'll put capital D over one column and the small d over the other column. And then we'll take the person who has no dimples and put their genotype on the side of our Punnett square. Next, we're gonna fill out the Punnett square by distributing those traits. So in our first box, we're gonna put a capital D from this person and a small d from this person. In our next column, we're gonna put two small d's because we have a small d from this person here and a small d from the person who we listed on the top. And then in the other two boxes, here we can put a capital D, small d, and small d, small d. This shows us how or what percentage of their offspring will have dimples or will not have dimples. So remember, in order for someone to have dimples, they can either be heterozygous or they can be homozygous dominant. If somebody does not have dimples, they can only be homozygous recessive and they have to have two copies of the recessive gene or recessive allele. And so let's uh, next we can figure out how many of their offspring will show dimples and will not show dimples. So here you can see that two of their children are gonna have the genotype for dimples because this person here has capital D, capital D, small d, and this person has capital D, small d, both of which would give you dimples. And so of the four potential offspring, that is 50% chance they will have dimples. Next, we'll look at no dimples. No dimples has to be small d, small d and you find that twice in this Punnett square. So two out of four is the same as 50%. So there's a 50-50 chance for these two people to have children who have dimples. Next, let's continue to use our example with dimples and no dimples, and let's do a test cross where we have two people who are both heterozygous for the trait. This means that both people have the genotype big D, small d, so they both have one allele for the dominant trait and one allele for the recessive trait. Remember, the first step is to distribute the letters across to the top and side of your Punnett square. So we'll take one of the parents and put it across the top, so we'll have a big D and a small d. And then we'll take the other parent and put it on the side of the Punnett square, so we have big D, small d. Next, we will distribute our genotypes through the Punnett square. So we're going to very first have a capital D in this box from one parent and a capital D in this box from the other parent. Then we can move across. Here we'll have a capital D, small d. And then we'll move down to the second row where we're again gonna get a capital D, small d. 
and that final box in our opponent square has small d, small d. Our last step is to count the number of offspring who show dimples and the number of offspring who do not show dimples. So offspring that show dimples, again, either have to be homozygous for dimples or heterozygous for dimples because dimples is a dominant trait. So what we find is that we have one, two, three individuals that show the trait for dimples. So that's three out of a total of four possible offspring. Three out of four is the same as 75%. So 75% of their offspring would potentially have dimples. Now we can look for no dimples. The only individual who does not have the trait for dimples is this person who has two lowercase d's, so they will not express dimples as a trait. So that's one out of four, or 25%. In our last cross, we're gonna look at a um, homozygous dominant individual crossed with a homozygous recessive individual. So we're going to put our capital D on the top of the box here, our capital D on the top of the box here, small d, small d, and then we're going to distribute those traits. So we'll do capital D, small d, capital D, small d, capital D, small d, and capital D, small d. What you should notice is that all of the individuals are heterozygous. They have both a capital D and a small d. And that's because one parent can only give a capital D to their offspring. The other parent can only give a small d to their offspring. And that means that all of the offspring will be heterozygous for dimples.